you can see, it's looking pretty dreek out there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm up in, up in sky. And it's quite late, it's about 10 o'clock. I've just sat in the, in the van listening to the rain. It's gone off at the moment, but it's been pelting it down. So my plans, my big mountain plans for going up top <laughs> onto some of the higher mountains are now gone. And I have to come up with a plan B. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to go up a hill, but some unfinished business. It was not unfinished business, but it's a hill that needs I need to do to complete something. And on the side of that hill is where the largest landslide that's ever happened in the UK is um, is located, and there's some oh, some amazing landscapes up there. So I think I'm going to head up there and just hope that the weather changes. But for now, I need to get up, get the van packed away because it's absolutely filthy. <laughs> It's not so filthy, it's just messy And um, with all my wet gear I had that all drying out uh, yesterday Above the heater So yeah, I'm going to tidy up, get some breakfast And I'll report back when I'm at my destination Right, let's get tidying With the van tidied, I set off And as you can see, the rain had started again And things weren't looking too promising but I had to get up to the start of the, the route and that involved a short drive up the Trotternish Peninsula and eventually up towards the start of the walk, which was quite interesting itself. The road up to this point is really quite interesting as you start to see the first signs of that massive landslide. Right, I've arrived. The rain's gone off momentarily, <laughs> so I thought I'd take this opportunity to get going, but you can see probably over to the your right behind the van, the start of the walk, and you can see some of those formations which have been caused by the uh, the landslide, which, as I said, I think is the biggest landslide that's ever happened in the UK. But more about that later on. I want to get going and get along here. It might be quite busy because it's quite a popular spot. But again, I'm hoping to get off the beaten track, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping the train goes off. But anyway, right, let's go. <laughs> Wow, look at that view behind me. And uh, yeah, the view's gonna get better this way, but that I'm hoping is gonna clear at some point because I missed that view. Uh, it's still in the cloud. It's very similar to when we did the Sky Trail, but if you watch those videos, I'll put a link in the description below. You'll see that we didn't see much of that. <laughs> so let's hope it clears. Ooh, All right, it's a bit getting steep here so uh, hopefully you can see me let me just go down just wanted to stop here I wanted to stop here some of you might recognise that I uh, instantly recognise this and I, we, we didn't stop here when we did it the last time but this is a very famous tree um, if you're into your photography you'll recognise this tree in the view you can see why it's it's a famous uh, famous tree and a famous picture you'll see this picture numerous times in landscape magazines I'm going to be trying my own one just on my, uh, on my wee camera it's now um, She's all right, isn't it? <laughs> right, anyway, don't know why I stopped to show you that. If you're a landscape photographer, you might find it interesting. Right, let's barry on. Wow, you can see where I'm going now a bit better. What a landscape. And the area I'm going to is called the Kerrang. And this is, I think, the largest, I think it's two kilometre landslip and it's still happening. <laughs> More of that in a wee while, but the sun's coming out. I don't know if you can see the shadows are getting chased across the, the landscape here. Anyway, I'm going to head up here. This first feature on the right, I think, is called the prison. There's another couple, one called the needle, and I want to go up to the table, which is meant to be really impressive, and I've never been there, so let's crack on, and I'll report back in a wee while. Oh man, hand pee. Oh, do I have to change my hat, I think. The wind is whistling up here now. Any, I've arrived at the Kerrang and there's three main features to the Kerrang, or three most commonly known ones. The first one's this one behind me called the prison. And I'm not going to go around that because I want to go up to the hidden one. It's called the table where apparently it's a billiard flat piece of ground where they, the legend has it, the Vikings, or, or the locals used to hide the cattle from the Vikings. 
It'll be interesting to see how they got them up there because my way to go up here, I'll show you how, how steep it is. That's it up there behind me. And you'll probably make out the most notable feature over my shoulder is the needle. That's the other one. So I need to go up round the back of the needle to find the, the table. <laughs> so let's go. Looks a bit steep and a bit scrambly, so wish me luck. <laughs> Woo! Tell you what, it's steep and the wind isn't getting any, <laughs> any less intense. In fact, it's getting windier as I go up. Woo! Oh, one step forward, three steps back and this stuff. Not for the faint of heart. So this was really quite steep and very, very loose. And I must admit to feeling like Frodo and Sam as they struggled to get their way to into Mordor and Mount Doom. It certainly had that feel about it with these imposing black volcanic rocks starting to surround me. Well, look. At that. Isn't that just spectacular? Wow, I need to take some pictures here. That view, the sun just hitting hitting the uh, the loch down there and the clouds coming out in the mist with the sun rays coming down. <laughs> Fantastic. I tell you what, anyway, I've come up, I'm not far from the needle now. See it's right above me there, I don't know if you can make it out, I don't know if the camera angle's wide enough. But that is one steep ascent and it's all scree, stuff like that. I don't know if you can make it out, but yeah, unless you're comfortable and steep ground, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't try it. And also these, all these rocks that you see scattered about, they've all come from up there. So the place where I'm sitting here doing some time lapse and taking photos probably isn't the best place to be standing. So anyway, we've got rain coming now, so I'm going to crack on and see if I can get around here and get to this table. I'm really excited about getting there, so let's go. Got the needle so high, so impressive, I can't even fit it all in the, into the camera shot. But what a place, what a place. I'll give you a wee spin round in a minute. Just following this wee path here, I don't think this is the way to the table, I think it's maybe more up this way, but there's a wee groove in here and it just looks too good not to explore, so I'll report back in a minute and see where it goes. Oh, dead end, eh? Ooh. Yeah, steep gully goes to a wee dead end. I was going to climb over the lip, but I think reading the descriptions we got this way, so let's head on up here, see if we can get to the top. That view there is fantastic. I'm going to take a picture. I'll put it up on the screen now if it's any good. Right, up we go. Oh, this is steep and loose. I think we're getting there though. I think I'm just about at the table now. Typical big heavy rain shower rolled in, but uh, yeah, I'll spin you around. Hopefully we'll be able to see the table. Oh wow! Well, hopefully you can you can see me. I don't know if I'm in shot or out shot. I'm going to be doing a wee bit here. Wow, what a place! Well, behind me here, that is the table, and you can see why they say there's been games of shinty played on it. And that actually used to be part of the summit plateau, which is up behind me here, which I'm hoping to go to uh, later on. And the other legend that they had was that the Vikings, um, or the the locals, used to hide there their cattle up on the table from the invading uh, Vikings, but you know what? 
I'd be struggling to get my dog up here, let alone a herd of cattle, to be honest with you. So, anyway, I'm going to spin you around here because the views this way are just as good. That is spectacular. What a place. And uh, I'll spin you around and show this, and I'll maybe explain a wee bit about the landslips. Look at that. You can see the escarpment's all running down. And what happened, um, and I've got Ben Dalton to thank for this because I read his article on the wonderful Lock Island's webpage. Um, and it, and it, it's, it's, it told you the, the, the history or the geology behind this. And if I'm getting this right, this whole area, the whole Trotternish Ridge, um, was formed by a big, la different landslips at different times. This was the largest one and it's still occurring. And if you look down, away down towards the sea, there's a road in a place called Flurigari. And they have to maintain that road on a yearly basis because the landslip is still moving ever so slowly down. And one of the reasons, or the reason behind the, the landslip is that there's a uh, volcanic rock infused with old sedimentary rock and the sedimentary rock is softer and lighter perhaps I don't know I'm sure somebody will correct me but anyway with the volcanic rock sitting on top of it I just pushed it down and caused these landslips as the as the crust or the the, the earth was moved to an angle and pushed up and I tell you I'm glad I did because it's one hell of a place I just hope the landslip doesn't continue to move up <laughs> up here but what a place anyway right I'm going to see if I can get down here. I can see a path down there actually, so I think I might be able to get down. I'm going to go and investigate. What a place though. I'm going to take some photographs as well. <laughs> What's a wee bit frustrating is the next part of the walk, or the final part, is I need to get, there's a summit up here along this ridge. Um, and it's literally about 30 or 40, maybe 50 metres, maybe less than that, vertically to the ridge, but I need to drop a few hundred metres down because there's no way of going up there without... Um, even a rock climber would, be, would struggle up there, I think, because it's all slimy. So I need to drop all the way back down to go to the end of the ridge to find a weakness in the cliffs to get up and over, because this is one of the routes you can take in the Sky Trail. We didn't take it because we came up down via Flurigari and through the Kerrang, but you can come up over this top, and it's the first sort of major summit on the Trotternish Ridge, so I'm keen to go and bag that, and then that'll be most of the, the summits done on the uh, Trotternish Ridge, so... Let's go and see if I can get back down to the main path and then all the way back up. <laughs> That's a bit exploratory this, I don't know. As I said, the guides all suggest you go back down the way you came, but that was super steep. And I had a wee look from the edge of the table. And it does seem to be a path zigzagging its way down to the main path this way. So I'm going to give it a go. We'll see. I'll report back in a wee while. So I headed on a little bit further round and the path did seem to be heading round the table and in amongst the Kerrang's rock formations but it seemed to be pretty good and I felt confident it was going to take me down in the right direction. Right, I think it's quite sheltered here so I'm going to take this opportunity just to get some lunch. I've got a scotch egg today the bar of Snickers. I'm going to take this hat off because I think it'll be quite blowy on the top and I did nearly lose my hat <laughs> quite a few times when uh, I was coming up towards the needle there. It was a rather blowy so let's have something to eat and I'll get my wee uh, my wheelie wheel hat on as well I think. It's time for that. Yeah, that's me had my scotch egg and bar of Snickers so <laughs> Hope you can see me. Time to get the backpack on and start heading down. I'm going to lengthen my poles a bit more. I usually have them at the longest level from the start, but for some reason I didn't do that today. So I need to lengthen them. And we'll get down. It makes a bit of difference on steep ground. Probably all blurred out. Anyway, so... Put them to the maximum level. Nothing. Let's go. Oh, that's better. Oh, sloppy. Glad I've got my poles. <laughs> it's such a imposing place. I'm glad this path seems a bit better than the other one. It does seem to be leading down, which is great. But I feel like 
<laughs> Every time I go around the corner I expect to see a an orc <laughs> or a hobbit because it really is prob probably as close to Mordor as you can get in the UK and that's a good thing because it is spectacular I'm so glad that I've come in to investigate it but as I said I'm hoping to get down and round and up the ridge and then I'll get a view down on it hopefully um, providing I've still got enough time we're now at yeah I've got two and a half hours before it's dark so let's go and see if I can get back down and back up <laughs> Right, hopefully you can see behind me, I am almost back on the main path and it's, it's steep coming down this way, but this path is actually, I would say it's probably better than the one that I went up and I'm certainly glad I've come down it, but you can see where I've come down, that's looking back up <laughs> towards the mountain and I've got to go a long way along here and then cut back up onto the ridge and then go to the top of the mountain so I've, I've done a wee bit of extra ascent and descent but it was well worth it just to get in, and, in amongst the table and the needle all these wonderful formations that have been caused by the landslip so yeah onwards we go along here and I'll bring you back when I'm probably heading onto the ridge and we'll see if we can get to the top of this uh, this mountain let's go so I dropped down into the glen and followed the path along which took me to a break in the cliffs and I was soon heading through that break and onto the ridge of the mountain itself and starting to ascend and the wind, well, the wind was certainly starting to howl too. That's a windy old, windy old place this. Wow, the views though. The views are stunning, absolutely stunning. You can see back down to this valley, right to the, it's not far now. See the way the Trotterish Ridge starts. As I said, this is the proper hill over here, so a few hundred metres to go. What a place, so let's go. Oh, there's the rain. So I've really just stopped to get my breath back. But the stuff that I was talking about with the landslips, you can actually see it from here. And I'm going to spin you around and hopefully I'll pick it up down here. Yes, yeah, so you can see all this, all these formations, all this, almost looks like drumlins, but it's where the landslips happened. It goes all the way down past those two lochans which we stopped at on the Sky Trail to, towards Flodigari and that's where the road down there is getting kind of constantly fixed because this, this is all moving down towards it apparently it's pretty impressive I think I think somehow I'm going to be more impressed when we get up a bit higher <laughs> get up a bit higher and then I can see down on the table but I've still got a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of hiking to do, to do before we get there I, I think this is Runahunish out here, the peninsula, which is the most northerly point in Sky, um, it might just be around the corner slightly. But what a place! Absolutely fabulous, right? I think I'm getting my breath back. <laughs> Let's go a few other hundred, a few more hundreds of meters to go to the top. Oh wow! Well, that's me just above. Hopefully, you can see me. The table. You might be able to see it to the left of your picture. You can see I'm. <laughs> I'm only about twenty or thirty meters above it. Maybe, maybe more than the table, but the bit I came up to do a wee bit of filming It's no more than 30 metres, I think I've done this all twice because I've gone up there, gone all the way back down, walked all the way around to come back up again But what a view, it's fantastic, I'm looking forward to coming along here and the views now along the ridge um, Just, I think it's the storm which is in the cloud, hopefully that'll lift because I'm really keen to see the view around the whole, along the whole ridge because I've not seen that before Anyway, I'm going to come back to this point, I'm actually going to cut and land to the summit of this hill uh, just so I can say I've been to the top and I'll come back here and I'll do some more footage to show you the uh, the fantastic features. Right, let's go to the summit. Ah, uh, the summit. I think this is about, oh, I can't remember. I'll put some stats on the screen here. It's, it's over five, between 500 and 600 metres. And I was just, I was just keen to come here, as I said. Um, it was a top we never came over when we did the Trotter Nation Ridge, but fantastic. There's these birds that keep flying past. In a flock. I'm not sure what they are. I, th I think I caught some footage of them. I'm really not sure. I could hear them. I can still, <laughs> I can still hear them. But anyway, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to head back to uh, towards the cliff edge, so I can get those views back down over the needle, and then the views down the ridge. Maybe get some photography done. But hopefully from here it's downhill. But it is blowing the hooli, and there's showers blowing in. It's great from here. I can just about see out 
to the other side of the peninsula now, looking west. There's shafts of light coming down. It's beautiful, but as as somebody said, I think it was in Nan Shepherd's The Living Mountain. She said that, or intimated anyway, that it's not always about getting to the top of the mountain. Although I've come to the top of the mountain today, this is probably, I hate to say it, and it's not boring, but the least exciting part of my adventure today, you know, getting in and, in and amongst the Kerrang and almost making it to the top and having to go back down into the valley, the rock formations and the views down there were far superior to, to what they are up here. And don't get me wrong, under norm, normal circumstances, the views from here are spectacular because you're high, you're looking over the seas, but I'm going to head back over to the bit that's uh, a bit more spectacular at the top and I'll report back to you in a wee while. Right, let's go. The wind's at my back now, which is good. Right, <laughs> I've come back over to the uh, the path and the cliff edge and one final bit. Now, I, I usually do this sort of stuff and you can see behind me, but what I'm going to do is spin the camera around because you really don't want my face when I'm showing you this because it's just spectacular down here. Look at that, you get another view of the table or the shinty pitch, pitch right in the middle of your um, the picture there. And the, the, the way I came down, I actually had to come back around this way and down and round the side of the table and then down the other side of this big prow and it was a better path than going down a way down that way but look at this isn't this just you can see how that that table used to be up here it's just the land slopes taking it down just a fantastic fantastic place i don't want to get too close to the edge here but you can see it's quite steep <laughs> what a what a landscape and i'm kind of hoping over this way you can see the light now streaming in from the west is starting to catch the hills, so let me spin you around again. So hopefully I'll get some nice photographs on the way down, but uh, yeah, I'll put the camera away for a wee while now and uh, I'll report back when I'm a bit further down. Oh, wind's caps flying about. <laughs> yeah, I'll report back later on. Wow. What a place. Woohoo! <laughs> right, let's go. Oh, just a wee bit to the small camera, microphone isn't on, but anyway, I'm just going to be down in time actually. The uh, the van is, where is it, just there, so not far to go, but the sun is literally touching the horizon. Um, it's just a way to go down, so I think I've timed this just right. I didn't expect it to be this late to be honest with you, but I was just enjoying myself too much. <laughs> right, I'll head down and I'll report back to you at the van. Whew. Get this so lovely, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, right, hey, that's me back at the van. First thing I've done is stuck the kettle on, dying for a cup of tea, and the sun's gone down. And I don't know if you can see on your right hand side of your picture that little light in the sky is the moon rising. Lovely, the band of Venus is just coming up. It probably won't come up in the camera. With some lovely foreground pay stations <laughs> for the car parking. Anyway, it's been a fabulous, fabulous day. Just a few things to go over and the reasoning why I chose this hill. Uh, one was the weather. I had chosen to do some a longer outing uh, further, further south on bigger hills and the forecast was just, I mean, I think they said the cloud cover would be It'd be, in, it'd be under, um, the, the hills, anything over 800 metres would be in the clag all day and the winds were really high, uh, higher up. They were high enough up there, to be honest with you, it was pretty windy. So I think it, had I gone for the higher hills, the weather, I mean, it would have been miserable. I would have been walking about in the clag. So coming to this hill, which was a bit lower down and being able to go in and explore the Kerrang um, was just absolutely brilliant. So yeah, that was that. That was a lesson. Um, the weather, I didn't start till later on. Another reason why I chose this hill, although I didn't expect it to take so long. It's been about five hours, four or five hours, but I have been doing a lot of loitering and uh, not, <laughs> not, not uh, speeding anything up, which just contributed to it. Another thing, just like I mentioned on the summit, was sometimes the best part of the hill doesn't always need to be the summit. Sometimes it's going up and exploring bits, and that was definitely the case here. Anyway, I'm going to shop now. I'm, absolutely, I'm pretty beat. Um, I've just had a Scotch egg and a Snickers all day, so 
I'm going to have a sandwich, a cup of tea, and then I think I'm going to head home. I'll check the forecast. I might do something tomorrow, but could be home for Saturday night. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there as always, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Right, cup of tea time.